G'day guys, this is Troy. Uh, he's a member of the Emu Campers Facebook page and he's also a subscriber to the channel. Just turns out that we happen to live in the same town and Troy reached out to me to have a look at his X-Traveller. And while we were looking around at the X-Traveller, he mentioned that he had this King's 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter and he was trying to work out how to get it in there. So we thought today we'd install it. I hope you like this video and if you like the type of stuff that we do and you want to see more of it not only can you like and subscribe to help us out on this channel comment down below but also we have now launched a patreon page where we show you behind the scenes videos outtakes what we're doing every day where we're going we give you links to the campsites that we go to and we're also going to start offering some competitions on the channel and if you're a patreon member you'll be able to get extra entries in those competitions and right now the first 20 people to sign up to our patreon will get a supporter level tier for just $1.50 per month and that's $1.50 per month as long as you stay subscribed so head on down to our patreon there's a link below in the description have a look at it if you like what we're doing support us so we can make more of these videos we can get out there more often we can go to more places and we can buy more gear without getting sponsors so that you guys can see exactly what it's like and get our honest opinion on whether we think it's good or whether we think it's rubbish so the first thing we had to work out exactly where we were going to put this inverter and originally troy had thought that it wasn't going to fit in here and we mucked around with it and tried some different orientations and we think that it should actually fit up and down in here and we should be able to mount that by just drilling holes and coming through in here and we can just bolt it in so that it's not going to rattle loose on corrugations we're going to use a couple of these uh, a l style fuses same as what i used on mine or just going to use a single one on here just a 175 amp it's only a 1500 watt inverter and thankfully the cable run is going to be really really short it's basically just from the inverter here to the battery pack here we've got our two lithium batteries and all of the electrical panel there so we'll just have to work out exactly where this is going to go probably somewhere around here and the uh the negative wire will just go direct to the batteries and we'll just earth that positive there so that we've got a little bit of safety oh look at that that's a perfect fit in there, that's nice. Run our cables out, sort of around here, maybe down here, across here, maybe put the fuse in here. That's gonna be so sweet. Just wanna make sure that we can get that cable in there. That should be all right to run up there. Where's the cable that you've got? Let's see how pliable it is. Oh yeah, that's nice. Very pliable. Yeah, that's good. That should be probably need to be. In fact, what I might even do, I might even actually strip this down and put it in before I even screw this in. in. It'd be easy, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Five minutes later. So when you're trying to use a really blunt drill bit, because it's the only one you have in the right size, use a tech screw first. How's that, eh? <laughs> now that's how you do it. <laughs> nice. 
nice. I'm just going to do those two first mm -hmm. and then I can put some bolts in there and measure the top a bit easier. So make sure that where I just put that. Mm. Well, let's fill one hole and find out. We've got silicon, right? <laughs> So what we're going to do now, we've made up a negative lead, hook that up to the inverter, route it all the way through here to the negative terminal of the batteries. Um, we'll leave this one off for now, we won't hook that up but we'll run it to there just so that we don't have um, lots of live wires while we're finishing off the rest of it. And then we're pretty much ready to go. We just need a little bit of uh, engineering because that's the cable's supposed to come out the, the top. The hours are coming out the side and it won't fit on any other way, so we just need to notch out a, uh, a hole on the side. Safety first, I always say. Okay, have a look at that, what do you reckon? Very neat. And then we'll just go on there. We'll cable tie all of that up together. You just got the link, haven't you? <laughs> I thought a meter would be plenty. Well, that's why, I, uh, that's why I said make sure you get a little bit extra. Yeah. <laughs> By the time you snake things around and go mm. round and round and round, it just uses up so much length you wouldn't you wouldn't have believed it. It's when you, especially when you go from the front of a car to the back of a car, by the time you've gone in and out of everything and up and around, you end up using 50% more cable than you think. All right. So now we're going to do these ones, and we're going to do these in situ because we like to make life difficult for ourselves and we've already connected them there. So, and I reckon I'm going to make that one go down like that. So I think around about there. Right on the end of the T. Yep. These wire cutters aren't really up to the task of four gauge, but now. Oh. Does the job. We 
Ninja. This will be alright. It's a nice fit, this one. This man managed to cut himself though. Did I mention we're out of heat shrink? I think so. We put the uh, red tape on to make it pretty, and then we cover it up with black tape anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's the benefit of the black tubing? It, it um, stops it rubbing through on corrugations, but it just looks really nice. If you're on corrugations for thousands of Ks, these cables will rub on each other and, you know, potentially on any sharp edges or anything like that, or even against each other. And if they wear through and you get a you know, negative and a positive or something earth here and rubs through, um, it can cause problems. If it's on this side of the fuse, it'll probably blow the fuse and just melt the wire a little bit. If it's on that side of the fuse, well, the whole thing go up in smoke. So it's a really good idea to put it on there when you can. Where there's a lot of sunlight on the cables as well, it can protect the sheath because a lot of this isn't UV stabilized, if, especially if it's cheap stuff. Um, so if it's out in the sun, it'll fade and get um, like start corroding or rotting. So if you've got that over the top at least that's UV stabilized and even if it isn't at least that fades first and it leaves your wiring to be safe and sound. Just need to do some minor repairs on my band-aid. It's not sticking. Fixed. If you have a look in there See, that's the exact kind of um, area where you would potentially get rubbing. See where that cable's pushed up against the top of the metal surface there? So that's a positive cable. And if the paint was worn off there and that cable was rubbing on corrugations, then you'd end up having a, a dead short and that could cause a fire. So that's where that conduit's really important. Now in hindsight, I should have put this another way up because we put the allen screws on the bottom where they're not and impossible to get to. That's only a problem if we ever want to take these in or out again. But <laughs> I was just thinking of taking this out, but that's not going to happen. Anywho, it's fine. Let's just uh, make it a bit longer than I would have liked, but gives us a little bit of play because of that slight indiscretion on the orientation of the fuse box. do this one and we're pretty much just going to cable tie a few things on and then we're good to go I think. We'll probably get a little arc when we connect it because the um, MOSFETs in the inverter will want to charge up if it was M. Um, a bigger inverter, I would probably um, use like a car headlight globe or something to slowly charge it, but or the capacitors, sorry, probably not the MOSFETs. Oh, oh there it goes. <laughs> Told you that it happened. It still scares the sh out of you every time. <laughs> so, when you're wiring up inverters. Get ready for that spark when you first connect the power to them. It still scares you every time, but just be ready for it. It doesn't mean that you've wired it up wrong necessarily. 
it's just it's taking a big load of current very quickly which isn't great for them but when they're 1500 watts or so it's all right they'll be fine all right should we see if we can make some smoke troy what do you reckon Well, that made the right sound. Yeah, yeah right there. Right there. There's a power light. There we go. Not the best test because we're outside, but it's all right. Yep. There we go. All right. So now we need to get a little bit more ambitious. Let's turn this all on. Do you want to plug the coffee machine in? See if it runs it? Mm. Same 1500 watts, that'll be close to its maximum. Well, this is 1340 to 1600 watts, so it might trip it out, but it's going to max that inverter right out. Let's see what happens. Fire up. Well, well. You can hear the inverter is working hard because the fans have come on. It's still heating up. Alright, it's ready. Oh, it's on. I don't have a filter in there. I don't have a pot in there, so it's kind of splashing everywhere. But all right. Well, there you go. Works. I shouldn't look surprised, should I? Not too hot or anything. It's barely even warm, so that's good. What do you reckon there? Troy, is it all good? Film. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Top job. Professional. So what we're going to do, um, instead of having to come around here and plug in under here every time, uh, if they're set up, you know, bush camping for a while, we've got an idea to use a 15 to 10 amp caravan adapter, and we're just going to plug the caravan adapter into there and then just come around to the back here, which is right here, and plug it into the van so they can um, take advantage of the inside power point. If they want to run a coffee machine or a laptop charger or something like that when they're off grid. And that's just a really simple way um, and, and sort of legal way of uh, running mains throughout the van without having to get a spark and you come in and rewire it. But the other thing you could do is what, like what I've done and actually wire that up through a generator changeover switch and have it go as an auxiliary into the main switchboard but that would take a little bit extra work and obviously supposed to get a license sparky to do that and then you've got the switches a hundred dollars and all the cabling you need more circuit breakers all that kind of stuff so um this is a really neat solution for troy because he's not planning on doing huge amounts of off-grid traveling so just a few nights here and there so you can just plug in there and, and just plug it straight in over there I hope you like this video and if you like the type of stuff that we do and you want to see more of it, not only can you like and subscribe to help us out on this channel, comment down below, but also we have now launched a Patreon page where we show you behind the scenes videos, outtakes, 
what we're doing every day, where we're going. We give you links to the campsites that we go to. And we're also going to start offering some competitions on the channel. And if you're a Patreon member, you'll be able to get extra entries in those competitions. And right now, the first 20 people to sign up to our Patreon will get a supporter level tier for just $1.50 per month. And that's $1.50 per month as long as you stay subscribed. So head on down to our Patreon. There's a link below in the description. Have a look at it. If you like what we're doing, support us so we can make more of these videos. We can get out there more often. We can go to more places and we can buy more gear without getting sponsors so that you guys can see exactly what it's like and get our honest opinion on whether we think it's good or whether we think it's rubbish. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.